through these. These are what we call optimization problems then. So uh, this will go kind of like this. This problem right here says you're finding two numbers that have a difference of 200, and they have a product that's a minimum. So when you're doing an optimization problem, you want to identify what your variables are, and then you want to always identify what we call the objective function. The objective function is what you do a derivative of, and then you set it to zero. And your objective function can only have one variable. So when I put this together, the first thing I'm just going to do my variables. X is going to be the, the first number. Y is going to be the second number. Okay, so the uh, what we call the objective function, that's what we're going to be minimizing, is going to be the product. So the Can you repeat what you said about the objective function? About what? About the objective function. Can you repeat what okay. you said? The objective function is what you will take the derivative of, and it's what you will set equal to zero. It's what you are optimizing. So notice the problem said the product is a minimum. So the objective function is going to be an, a function for the product of these two numbers. Okay? All right. So the objective function, I'm just going to put P is equal to X times Y. That's your objective function because you're doing the product of those two numbers. The problem with this is, is it has two variables, and it can only have one variable. You can't do the derivative of x, y. You want to get this down to one variable. So what you do in the next step is you see if there's an equation. So right here, I say the difference of these two numbers is 200. The word difference means that you're subtracting two numbers to get 200. Okay? So what we end up doing is this equation for the difference you want to pick a variable and solve it for either variable. I'm going to do this like this. I'm going to move the y to this side. I'm going to move the 200 to this side. So I'm going to get x minus 200 equals y. You don't have to do it that way. To me, that's the easiest way to solve that equation for y. It's just move y and move 200. And what you're going to do is you're going to replace the y in your objective function with this thing right here. And then that way you get this down to one variable. So this is now be going to become P of X. The X is still there. You have X, but change that Y to X minus 200. Okay, now this is all pause right here. This is kind of the whole key to the problem is uh, getting this part right right there. Okay, so the objective function, see the problem said product is a minimum. That word minimum means that's what we're going to be working with and with the calculus, taking a derivative of. The product means multiply two numbers, x times y. The difference is x minus y is 200. So I solve and plug in, and then I get this. So is there any questions what I've done so far? No. Uh, this is the key to the problem now. So you've got P of X, and then, then I would certainly go ahead and multiply that out. You get X squared minus 200X like that. Now, that is your objective function. Now, if you wanted to check the answer we get on this problem, you could graph that objective function to see if the, the number we get is the correct minimum. So I like to kind of highlight that and kind of, you know, put something by that. And that's an important part of the problem. We go to step four, we do critical numbers. So we do critical numbers by doing the first derivative. So that would be 2x minus 200. Now we set that first derivative equal to zero, solve the equation to get a critical number. Okay, so I could move the 200. So I get 2x equals 200. Divide by 2, so x equals 100 is my critical number, okay? All right, now this problem I didn't ask for a sign chart. If I asked for a sign chart, you would just do x equals 100, and then you would plug in test points into the derivative, and then that would basically, the purpose of that would be uh, to see 
if this thing is really a minimum. So you could plug in anything you want to. You can plug a number less than 100 would be zero. Your derivative is right here. Your derivative is 2x minus 200. So if you do 2 times 0 minus 200, why does I keep doing this crap? Uh, two, uh, that would be negative. That means you decrease. Pick a number bigger than 100. That would be 101. So 2 times 101 minus 200. That would be positive. That means you increase. So that means the graph decreases, increases. That means it's a minimum. Okay, so that means that we do have a correct minimum like that. So really what we're doing on this is we have found the first number was 100. Now we've got to find the second number. Well, well, you got a couple of places where you could get the second number. There's two places here. You could get, you could get Y by plugging in X into that equation, or you can plug it in that one. It doesn't make any difference, okay, because it's the same equation anyway. So we just have... Uh, y is equal to x minus 200. So plug in the 100, and you would have y equals 100 minus 200. So that would be y equals negative 100. So your other number is negative 100. So that's your answer to the problem. And then I can show you graphically how you can easily check your answer to your problem. Okay, do we have questions about that? Okay, now, one of the things that I did on here is, you know, I kind of circled this original function. Here's what you can do to check if you're right, if you want to anyway. Uh, you could graph the objective function, x squared minus 200x. Um, and you could, uh, you know, you'd have to kind of work with a window here. So uh, one of the things on here, my critical value was 100. So if I was kind of working with this, I'd probably go maybe 0 to 200, just, you know, use a number bigger than 100. You could scale that by 50 or something like that. Um, if you look at your table, you kind of see that you got pretty big numbers in there. You have some negative numbers. You have some positive numbers eventually. So you might want to do just try something like, I don't know, negative 5,000. 5,000, maybe by a scale of 1,000 like this. But I mean, you don't have to do this because if you're doing this on a test, this is taking up time. Ah, oh, crap, what did I do? <clears throat> um, oh, shoot, I put, start, put that in wrong. Y minimum negative 500. And let's see, 5,000 there and then scale by a thousand. That's what I intended to do is that. Okay. So anyway, you're going to, you kind of get a graph and you're going to see a minimum on here. You probably would want to make that Y minimum go a little smaller. So I'm going to take that to negative 10,000. And then the point of this is you can visually see that that's a correct minimum. So if, if the minimum happened at X equals a hundred, you could trace it a hundred and then that pretty well is going to show you that that's the minimum right there. Okay? You don't have to do that. That kind of can take up some time, but it is an option that you have. Okay. Does anybody have a question about how I solved that problem? No. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. The next one, uh, we'll go ahead and go through this one. So, this is another kind of op optimization problem, and it's still de dealing, this one's dealing with a rectangle. Um, so what this problem says is you have a rectangular garden. It's built with three sides of fence. The other side is just a barn, so you're not going to use fence uh, for the part of the rectangle that's a barn. And then it says you have 1,000 feet of fence available. Then it says what are the dimensions of the garden that would maximize the area? So we've already got a picture, and typically on a problem like this, I'd give you a picture. So the first thing that we want to do is let's just kind of figure out what these variables are. So I'm just going to let X be the length like I have in this diagram, and then Y is going to be the width. Okay, and then the next step is you want to work with the objective function, and this is the whole key to doing these problems. The objective function is what you're optimizing. 
So what this problem says is maximum area. It's area that you are optimizing. So how do you find the area of this rectangle? You do base times height. So it's going to have a lot of similarities to the last problem I did. Okay, the problem is my objective function finding the area has two variables. So what I have to do in step three is I have to get this down to one variable. Okay, because I can't finish the problem until I do that. So the other piece of the problem that's in here is it says that you have a thousand feet of fence that you can use. Okay, so you can write that as an equation. So what you do is you add up these three sides. Okay, you're going to have x plus 2y, and that's what's going to be equal to 1,000. And you can use that equation to work with uh, this objective function. You can solve it for x, or you can solve it for y. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to solve this for x because it's easier to solve for x. You could solve it for y if you preferred that. So I'm just going to move the 2y so I get x equals 1,000 minus 2y. Okay, so now what the purpose of doing that now is um, so you can plug that in to your objective function. You're going to plug that in for x. So what you end up getting on this then is, is this. Okay, so if I get my objective function now, I'm going to write this kind of like this. I've got uh, A, I'm going to replace X with 100 or 1,000 minus 2Y. Then I still got my Y. So that just plugs in there. And now I've got one variable. I've got A of Y. And when I multiply this out, I'm going to have 1,000Y minus 2Y to the second like that. Okay, so let me pause there. That's the key to the problem, is getting an objective function with one variable. Any question? Yeah, how did you get to what? Okay, that came from adding up the sides. X, Y plus Y is 2Y. Okay, so remember, this is your fence. You're going to add up all these sides, and that will give you the amount, the number of fence you have. So I'm doing just X plus Y plus Y, and Y plus Y is 2Y. Okay, you got it? Okay, you good? Yes. Okay, all right. Now what we do is uh, we're now ready to do the first derivative, set it to zero to find a critical number. So the derivative is 1,000 minus 4Y. Uh, you want to take 1,000 minus 4y and set that to zero. The uh, way I'm going to solve this is move the y to this side, so I get 4y equals 1,000. Then I can divide by 4, so I get y is equal to 250 feet would be your critical number on that. Okay, so now if you, if you wanted to do a sign chart, I'm not asking for a sign chart on there, so you don't necessarily need to do that. Uh, you would just do test points into the derivative. So your, um, your first derivative here is, you can plug that into, the first derivative is right here. So if you put like a zero in, you would have 1,000 minus 4 times zero would be positive. That means the function increases. Uh, pick a number bigger than 250, like 251, plug it into the derivative. 1,000 minus 4 times 251 would be negative. That means the function decreases. So that does mean that you have a function uh, that increases, then decreases. So that does mean that that number, 250, is a maximum. Okay, so now you're ready to just kind of get the other answer to the problem, and then the problem will be solved here. There's a couple other things I'm supposed to do, supposed to do on this also. So I'll kind of go on to the next step is we're ready to write the answer. So we have uh, y uh, was equal to 250 feet. Now we need to find x. Okay, well, you find x this way. Okay, you got that equation x plus 2y equals 1,000. You just plug it in. So we get 1,000 minus 2 times 250. You work that out. That would be 1,000 minus 500. 
So that would mean that you would end up getting X is equal to 500 feet. Okay, so you get that. Your answer to the problem is basically what you have is your dimensions are this. So when you put this together, the Y's in this diagram were 250, like that, and then this dimension right here is 500. The other thing you want to do is the problem said, what is the maximum area? So the maximum area, what you would do is just do 500 feet times 250 feet, and then you would have what your maximum area is. Okay, so I'll just take the like this and put that in the calculator. So I have 500 uh, times 250, and that's going to give me the maximum area is 125,000 square feet. Okay, it's a pretty big garden. Okay, but that's our, those are big dimensions. Okay, so this ultimately would be your dimensions right here, and that's your maximum area. Both of those two problems I did are actually pretty similar to one another. Okay, do we have questions about that?